done. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, we will jump right in. Um, so we have another episode of More Than a Van. You might be wondering who this is because this is not Jared. Um, this is Josh, Mr. Josh Saunders. Um, no relation van. to Lane, by the way. Yeah. No, if you know Lane, who uh, manages our website, not related, but no it would be cool re- if no you relation. were. <laughs> None that we know of, at least. Yeah, could be. Long distance. Maybe. You know, I mean, hey, you never know. Uh, maybe good facial hair runs in the family because you got. He's got a good head of hair. Well, that, yeah, that. And then the mustache is just like. Yeah. Yeah. The, I, I don't think I've ever heard anybody say anything about his mustache not being the best. So. Yeah. But mine's I, not that good. So. And the beard well, is like only out of necessity because I honestly, I've just been too busy to shave. <laughs> <laughs> that you're going to say because it's been cold. I'm like, well, awesome. Oh, no, no. <laughs> not accurate. Okay, cool. Well, um, I'll let you introduce yourself if there's anything more you want to share about who you are, and we'll jump right into how you found Van Do It and how this whole journey started. Uh, yeah, I've uh, been a Van Do It owner now since I think 2019. I probably put in the order in late 2018, um, but I initially had a Go model, kind of entry level, mid roof, AGM batteries, solar. Yeah, the mid-roof really um, just still blowing my mind with the mid-roof. You may yeah. not be able to tell because he's <laughs> sitting, but you are 6'6". Six, six. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just shy of 6'6". Six, six. And uh, my initial thought was, you know, a high roof, I'm still too tall for a high roof mm-hmm. to stand all the way up in. So I might as well get the extra, like, gas mileage and, like, wind, like lessening my wind resistance Mm -hmm. and when you're in the van you think oh i'll mostly be sitting down anyway yeah Um, or sleeping yeah or laying down yeah and so it's that was kind of my initial thought and i traveled in the van by myself a lot and then when COVID hit and kind of van prices exploded i took that opportunity to sell that van and use the money that i made which wasn't much but it was enough to upgrade to a newer Van Do It mm-hmm. model, which then became the Live. So I went from Go to Live. And still a mid roof though. Still a mid roof because I had the same wow. thought process. Yeah. Um and uh the upgrades were it now it was all wheel drive instead of two wheel drive, which I learned trying to get up and down some mountain roads in Colorado that two wheel drive mm-hmm. wasn't gonna cut it. Yep. <laughs> getting getting passed by loaded down semis over the Monarch Crest Pass was pretty scary, <laughs> even in the summer. I can only imagine. Yeah. And uh, so all-wheel drive, um, it was the live floor plan, so it was a bit of an upgrade there. And a little more space for seating in the front because the battery moved from front to back. Mm-hmm. And uh, those were really the two main things that I wanted to improve upon. Um, and then... Uh, I met my now wife and we were traveling together and with our cats and the mid roof got crowded very quickly. And well, yeah, you quadrupled your, <laughs> your yeah, party. So. Yeah. So as I was thinking about what maybe the next van might look like, then I was in a head on collision and totaled the van and, uh, yeah, kind of a wild story in and of itself in that. But long story short, I uh, was able to take my insurance proceeds, which Van Duet did an excellent job kind of negotiating on my behalf with my insurance company, um, but was able to take the insurance proceeds to upgrade to what is now a move model, which uh, because of my height I had to have some re-engineering in it because most move vans, I think the beds go sideways instead of yeah. long ways like the old yeah like east to west instead of north to south exactly and uh jared was like well can can you try to sleep sideways and i'm like jared there's just no in way in the fetal position <laughs> yeah and he, he's like what about at an angle and i was like if it was just me great oh, yeah, yeah fine but yeah when it's the wife and the two cats who like to cuddle in bed also yeah uh, there's just no way. So they yeah. were uh, Jared and the team were very accommodating and uh, helped me kind of re-engineer that floor plan to what I have now, which is kind of a hybrid between all the bands that I've had in the past, plus yeah. the new move kind of commercial commercial style. So. Yeah, because you have the the same bed. You've had the same bed all three vans, the queen size hydraulic 
Yeah. Bed. Yeah, but each time they've gotten an upgrade. So the first bed I had in the Go model didn't have a folding leaf on either yeah. end. So it was just like a flat platform mm -hmm. that moved up and down. Um, in fact, Ian had to bleed the system one time for me because the system got kind of haywired a little bit. And uh, I had, had like a four inch drop on one corner. And mm -hmm. Ian drove to met me in Arkansas at a bike race to bleed the system like overnight. <laughs> so that's uh, service, shout out to customer Ian. service. Yeah, shout out to Ian in 2019. That's so and, long ago. That's wild. Uh, but yes, yeah, it's, it's funny because since then, the that hydraulic system is pretty much the same. And I have never had an issue. And uh, on top of that, the last van, the the live model had a folding leaf on the cabin side, mm -hmm. which I used all the time if I didn't want to have to just adjust the bed every time somebody decided to sit in the back seat or not. Um, and then now the new van has a folding leaf on both sides. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, for the same reasons, that's great. And you can kind of prop your head up if you want to sit up and watch a movie from the back of the bed or, you know, if somebody's wanting to come in and sit in the back seat, which is kind of underneath, uh, the bed under the sliding door, uh, it's easy to just kind of prop it up. So every time it gets a little, little slight upgrade and yeah. I'm sure the feedback that the team gets goes a long way each time. Oh yeah. Uh, well, that's the whole reason why it changes. You yeah. Know? We, either we experience it ourselves, like Jared takes the vans out. We have episodes talking about his trips all the time where he tests things out that maybe aren't even out yet. Or he's like, man, this, this needs to be different, you know, for this specific application or whatever. So yeah, that feedback is definitely very, very helpful. And we appreciate that you don't hold back that you'll let us know. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I definitely get a lot of use out of the van cause it's my weekend getaway vehicle. It's my long term vacation vehicle. It's my work from home vehicle at times. And it has like really opened up my ability to travel. And it's not just like, let's say I'm in, I live in Dallas. Let's say I'm going to Arkansas for the weekend well, historically, I would have had to leave Friday after work um, or maybe Friday really early before work so that I can get most of the drive done. Either way, though, you're getting to Arkansas Friday afternoon, Friday evening, um, staying the night in a hotel or campground or whatever. Then you have all day Saturday to do something. You have half a day Sunday to do something and drive home. It's a five and a half hour drive. Yeah. Well, with the van, I am now getting a half a day on both ends of that because I can leave Thursday after work, get most of my drive done, sleep overnight in the van, wherever, yeah. safe, comfortable, and then wake up the next morning, finish the drive. I'm in Arkansas by 10 a.m. Now, all of a sudden, I have all day to do something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, whether Jared's that. making faces at us. Oh, boy. <laughs> Probably because uh, his podcast chair got hijacked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think he might be a little happy about that. I yeah, don't know. I think that's, yeah. He loves doing it. Don't yeah. get it wrong. Now somebody's going to have to do it to him, though. That's so, true, yeah. Yeah. Uh, be careful what you ask for there, Jared. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but yeah. But, yeah, it definitely offers a lot more flexibility, and you just get a lot more time to do things because of the convenience. Exactly. Yeah, and, and let's say it's a longer trip to Colorado or uh, or Utah or something. Well, now all of a sudden I'm turning a 10-hour single drive day or a 12-hour single drive day yeah. into a half day and a shorter full day. Yeah. And now I'm still – like I'll still leave Dallas at, you know, 7 p.m. on a Thursday night and then – you know, drive three or four hours to midnight, wake up the next day, have six or seven hours left. Now, well, now I'm have two or three hours of daylight when I get mm -hmm. to Colorado. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'm, get, I'm just gaining an extra half day on both ends without doing anything except driving a van. Yeah. And for the most part, you don't have to. I mean, in most places, you don't have to worry about booking something ahead of time. You can park in a Walmart parking lot or a Cracker Barrel or, you know, whatever. There are a lot of different places yeah. you can just pull over and do that and everything you need is right here and you know in the case of like your cats too i mean i don't know all hotels like pet friendly or if there's a fee like what i mean how would you do that with your cats yeah. now if well you we to... found this out the hard way a couple times in that there's a lot of places that will say pets allowed 
But then if you really start digging into it, it's, well, up to two dogs, dogs only, no cats, and the dogs have to be under 40 pounds. And like I've I've had Airbnbs <laughs> do that to us. Yeah. I've had hotels. So the generic pets allowed, you're kind of yeah, like, oh, it doesn't really okay. apply across the board. And and I get it. Cats are a little more like uh, people. More people are allergic to cats than than dogs. They do have like a, a more sensitive, like flakier skin, I guess, to a lot of people. But sure, um, yeah. yeah, it's it's kind of unique to have to travel with the cats. But I will say. I've always been a dog guy. I love dogs. Um, always had dogs, and but traveling in a van with a dog seemed very daunting to me. And mm-hmm. not that they wouldn't be a good travel companion, but more of that I would feel bad that they need to be a little more catered to, like yeah. being let outside to go to the bathroom. They don't want being, to just nap on the dash like right. a cat in the yeah. sun. <laughs> They're yeah, good they, for hours doing that. <laughs> yeah, they need to be kind of let outside. They need to be uh, in cooler temperatures, like cats do better in heat than do- than dogs yeah. do. Um, now, saying that, I don't leave my cats in the hot van. Yeah, um, but I mean, it's comparatively much easier (laughs) but that's one of the great things about the new move model is like with the lithium system like we just turn on the air conditioner now and we don't have to be plugged in or anything yeah and you could be gone for several hours and not have to worry about it exactly so um yeah it was much easier to kind of get the cats accustomed to or really it was much easier for us to get accustomed to traveling with an animal yeah because of the cat's than a dog would have been but yeah um yeah just the flexibility that the van has offered has been incredible and obviously i i, I'm, I guess i'm a little biased but like i'm not employed by van do it or anything i just really <laughs> have enjoyed the product over the last five years now yeah. and uh have put a lot of miles on those three vans and in, including a, a loaner van that i had for six months yeah so um, yeah, I forgot about that. You had an, one of our old show vans yeah. for a while. Yeah, so I've had the Go, the Live, a uh, a Do model, and now the Move model. So. Wow, so you've really experienced all of it. So yeah. you're probably the best source. <laughs> yeah. People can ask you anything. Yeah, for sure. And I... Yeah, it's been great. <laughs> I don't know what else more to say about yeah. how uh, much flexibility the vans have created for not just myself, but for Holly and I. Yeah. Well, what was travel like before, you know, before you, so back like pre-2018 and yeah. what made you want to look for a camper van or was it kind of by accident? Yeah, that no, that's this? a good point. Um, so I, uh, I played college basketball and after uh, graduating college, I was still playing a little bit. But I could see the light at the end of the tunnel of, I can't play forever. And this is kind of my outlet. This is how I exercise. So I started looking for something else to do. And I fell into mountain biking. I'd ridden bikes as a kid growing up. But like, just like little Walmart kind of uh, junker bikes that we thrashed around and jumped off pallets at Papaw's barn and um, (laughs) riding up and down the dirt road that we lived on. Normal kid things. Yeah, but I was, at this point, I was... 27 28 and i hadn't ridden a bike in years um so i just kind of wanted to get back into it and i caught the bug very quickly and found uh enduro racing which is a multi downhill stage mostly downhill stage format race and uh so there's like a bit of a adrenaline factor to it but there's also a big fitness aspect to it because you have to pedal uphill every time um so I kind of fell into that, and at the time, I had a Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk. So it was the smaller Cherokee, like, with some off-road capabilities, and um, I would either go to a race and stay at a nearby hotel with the bike mounted on the back, um, all my gear inside with the seats down, and then occasionally I would camp out of the Cherokee, which included me like sleeping inside of it with like an air mattress Mm. and uh cozy but (laughs) so i had a couple really bad experiences especially being tall where i was sleeping inside the jeep overnight a storm would come through all my gear is outside all my gear would get soaked and i even Mm. would prep i would be like okay all this is going into tupperware you know i'd have tupperware camp stuff well 
that doesn't matter if like the wind's blowing and um yeah yeah so i had a couple bad experiences and i thought you know the bikes are getting trash i'm like really committed to riding and racing and and traveling in in this way so what are my options of uh traveling and kind of getting outside and riding the bike and my first thought was well i can get a truck and like a camper and immediately i thought um one, I have to sell the Jeep because it doesn't really have a towing capacity big enough yeah. for a camper that I would want to uh, get. So I'd have to buy a truck and then I'd have to buy the camper. And I started doing the math. I'm like, well, shoot, as if I'm going to spend that much money on a truck and camper set up, I might as well get a van. And there was a girl in the uh, race scene that I was in that had a uh, bought a van from you guys and she was bringing them to the races and I thought it was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. And I'd seen other people do like homemade builds, mm -hmm. but I, I don't really have like the, the like hand skill to do a lot of that stuff. I think I could build my own van, but it would be like a B minus to C plus level <laughs> effort. Um, <laughs> or it would be, the opposite of that, which is I am a bit of, of a perfectionist, but that means it would take me 10 or 12 hours yeah. to do something that someone else could do in an hour. Yeah. And so um, I just I saw the Van Do It product and I thought, man, the value and bang for the buck and versatility and durability of the product um, really intrigued me. And yeah, at the time, you guys were still doing the like, hey, this is a retired passenger rental unit mm -hmm. that has been transferred over from the other company building it up and then selling it and now of course you guys are too busy to do that like i don't know if you do any more retired fleet uh builds but no i mean everything now is mostly uh new yeah custom new custom builds or they're you know something like your old van that you've traded in that we would recertify and you know tweak a little bit but yeah that's the majority of it yeah yeah, so it's been, um, yeah, that was kind of my process of, like, getting to the realization of I need a van and uh, and I'm committed to, like, traveling and getting outside and, and what's the best way to, to do that. So, yeah, that was kind of my story and how I got in touch with you guys and um, it's been smooth sailing ever since, even with snowstorms and accidents and crashes and getting stuck in Colorado in a rainstorm, like actually stuck in a mud mud pit <laughs> with no one to help. So that was Man. a fun one. <laughs> Sounds like it was really fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, the skiing out of the van, like being in Breckenridge, Colorado, and it was negative 25 degrees. It was so oh cold gosh. that our hubcap fell off. Like just we're driving down the road and the hubcap just flies off because the oh when it gets that cold things change yeah. in diameter. So that's crazy. Um, yeah. So despite all of that, oh, on the way here, I think I might have hit a small bird. I'm sorry, bird. Oh it was either God. a I'm sorry, it was either bird. a big bug, like a, a really big bug. <laughs> yeah, like a pretty sizable. I mean, we're in Missouri. Grasshoppers get pretty big that's up here. True, that's true. It could have been a grasshopper. But, oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> Sorry, bird. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> hey, sometimes it just happens. They just come out of nowhere. And, yeah. You know. Yeah. You can't, you do everything you can to avoid it other than just <laughs> completely slamming on the brakes. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, just stories like that from the last five years are countless. And yeah. uh, I wouldn't change it for anything at this point. Awesome. Yeah. I love that. Well, that would have been such a great place to end, but I have a couple more questions. Yeah, no. <laughs> that yeah, was so going. like round out. Oh, it was great. Everything. Poor, poor bird. But like everything's great. And we stopped. But um, no, you can't end on the bird. <laughs> no. Yeah. We no, we're going to say it was a grasshopper. <laughs> yeah. It was a grasshopper. It yeah. Was, yeah. Um, so with your all of your vans so far and then um, so take the the three and we'll include the loner because you had it for a decent amount of time. Out of those three, the go, the live, and then that do model, what was like maybe like a couple of components or a couple of aspects of it that you're like, I absolutely need to have this in my next one. So when you got the final one, what was something that you're like, we, I need this for sure. There's no 
denying it and then new components in the final one that were you know brand new to you that you were like that's definitely something i want yeah i'd say there's two aspects to that and this is learning from the first fan to this one and the most important to me um was the all-wheel drive ecoboost motor um because in my original van it was two-wheel drive it was the base model v6 um and driving even on some of the arkansas hills it would get sluggish and like coming up on, over the monarch pass i was on my way to crested beauty back it was the middle of the summer so it was good weather and i went all the way up monarch pass at like 30 miles an hour and the van just couldn't quite make it up and i kept i had to put the van in manual mode and then shift manually between third and fourth gear and uh it was just brutal so like have to have a good engine and the Ford quality EcoBoost engine is, you know, one of the best out there. So that was an easy kind of have to have it. Don't care what the cost is. Uh, and then the second was going from AGM to lithium because I had AGM in the go and the live models, but you know, the AGM battery was not powerful enough to power the the air conditioner without shore power and um you know there was some like minimal let's say like cooking type stuff or like obviously i don't need a hair dryer but if holly needed a <laughs> hair dryer or something um so going from agm to lithium was a big jump yeah. and i think you guys have three tiered mm -hmm. like and i'm on stage two so i'm like not even the highest tier and to be able to run the air conditioner for 10 to 12 hours with no shore power yeah. is pretty impressive. So you could run your hair dryer for like 12 hours. <laughs> I've, I've cooked pizza pizzas on the beach in California. Well, that sounds magical. Uh, yeah. In a toaster oven, air fryer, mm -hmm. um, convection oven. So yeah, I mean like I wouldn't have been able to do that in the last van or if I did, I would have just completely drain the battery system yeah. and been limited on everything else I needed. Um, so yeah, that was pretty, that was a fun like realization that I ran, I cooked a pizza for like 20 minutes and I checked the battery and it only down like 3%. Wow. I'm like, what? Well, this is a lot of power. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else need a pizza? Just like down the beach. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. So that's great. Uh, those, those are definitely the two, two main ones. Yeah. So then with the move, um, what was the transition? Like when the move came out, like what made you, what made you decide that you wanted that one instead of just like the, you know, this, a similar model to what you'd had before another live. Yeah. So I'll go back a little further after the wreck. Um, I was talking with Jared and I'm like, Jared, I've got some events coming up. Can I just buy an inventory unit? And like knowing Jared for like four years up to that point, I would, he was like, honestly, we can sell you a standard live model like you had, but I don't want to, like, I, I don't want you to buy a live. I was like, why? He's like, cause I know you're going to love the move model that much more. And, uh, and the reasons being is the additional storage that mm -hmm. the van allows, which in the live model you have. A lot of factory liners still so you kind of mm -hmm. have let's call it like an endoskeleton of t-tracking and then you know cabinets and stuff hanging off of that so you're kind of yeah. pushing everything inward from what the factory liner is yeah well in the move model you're removing most of the factory liner because mine's a passenger van i still have a little bit of it for the uh airbags yeah but if you're in a crew or a cargo then there's no airbags or at least no airbags in the back in a crew. So you have uh, a lot of extra space to work with, and now you're using custom siding, and you're utilizing every square inch of space that you can for storage yeah. now. So uh, that was kind of the the idea behind, or Jared's idea of forcing me to buy a move model. Um, <laughs> and it worked out. I will say, when I, I picked up the van two months ago now, and this would have been my fourth van. So I was driving in expecting kind of a letdown almost in that I'm used to having a van. I know the product. I know a lot of the people on the team here. I've been to mm -hmm. the shop several times. Um, I wasn't expecting that like wow factor that I had 
the first time I bought the van or even the second time I got the van because it was a big difference between the yeah. Go and the Live. And uh, I got here and saw the van in the first five minutes of being on site and was immediately blown away. I was like, wow, I kind of have that like wow factor that Aww. I had the first time I had the I van. That. And, yeah, that's that's not just like a story for the podcast. I told Miles and Jared that the first time I was here when I picked yeah. it up. Um, so yeah, it, it's awesome. That's great. <laughs> the, the move is so good. I love having the cabinets all the way down on both sides. Mm -hmm. Um, we went from like storing things in like cubbies along the side of the bed and just kind of trying to find every little square inch to like hang a bag or, or hang some netting to put stuff in. So now it's like we have empty shelves and cabinets because we don't have enough stuff to fill it with that's great so room yeah. to go shopping <laughs> yeah more cat toys oh yeah that's perfect oh my gosh yeah we could talk forever about that i feel like we're probably already at oh you're quite a bit over yeah we're i could tell we were probably over if you're interested in more about the cats in van life thing um josh did write a blog for us that's up on our website so you can check that out i'll have austin we can put that link in the description so people can read that you'll probably have more stories coming um in our blog coming I've got soon some because, ideas yeah i mean i want to hear about the cooking a pizza on the beach in california because that just sounds fantastic so yeah nothing more blissful in my mind than the beach and pizza so <laughs> yeah to i'll end with this as maybe kind of a teaser i will say if you don't want people coming up to you on the beach while you're trying to eat a pizza to talk to you about your van don't buy a van do it <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, but Th if there are ways to make it incognito, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, but if if you're especially in a state like California where van life is pretty popular and uh, yeah, I, I had so many people come up to me more more than any other van I've driven um, on that trip. So it was fun. Teaser. Stay tuned. <laughs> Episode later. <laughs> OK, well, thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks. Appreciate for, you being thanks. on. Yeah, it was a blast. Thanks, Austin, for putting it together. Oh, thank you. Thanks.